Hi, I'm Amelia Bordeaux, and I'm the founder and CEO of Market Compass. Market Compass focuses on macro trading, global macro trading. We usually express ideas through foreign exchange, but we also express through other asset classes as well. Now, just briefly, what is global macro trading? Well, global macro trading takes in a range of factors, economic, geopolitical, news, and data, and some even technical analysis to examine markets. Because there's such a wide breadth of things we take into account to generate trade ideas, we need a framework, a very clear framework for analyzing all of that together. And so one way we analyze it is through market themes. And so what we do is we very carefully choose market themes that we think are impacting the market or will impact the market. And we watch how those themes develop. And the development of those themes and the tracking of those themes acts as a compass to initiate trade ideas, generate trade ideas, and manage positions. Now from that description, you might have figured out why the company is called Market Compass. But right now, let's look at some of those market themes. Okay, here they are. The first is the U.S. economy. Is it growing slower or slowing down? So where exactly is the U.S. economy in the growth cycle? The China economic slowdown. The third theme is European political uncertainty and its economic slowdown. The fourth is, of course, Brexit uncertainty. I'm going to touch briefly on some of those themes that we just went over. Now, each one is in-depth and, and rather complicated. I'm just going to give you a little bit of a taste of how we might start to analyze those, and then we're going to look at some charts. So the first theme I'm going to talk about is China economic slowdown. Now, that's mainly an Australian dollar play. We look at the Aussie economy. The Aussie economy is slowing. It's going to be impacted even further by the Chinese economy. Uh, Australia's housing sector is in a slump. They face falling prices and tighter financial conditions. The next thing we're going to talk about is Europe. Now, Europe has both kind of an economic slowdown and also uh, political uncertainty. So coming up towards the end of May, um, it's May 23rd through 26th, that is the EU parliamentary elections. And we need to watch there for more of a shift towards the populist parties. Now that's a risk because those populist parties tend to also be Euro skeptics. And so should they, you know, come more into power, that can really affect uh, European policymaking over the next five-year period. Just taking a quick look at growth in the Eurozone, um, the ECB just ended quantitative easing in December. It doesn't look like they're going to hike rates anytime soon. Uh, if you believe that the U.S. economy is slowing, I'm not of the opinion that Europe is going to pick up and be the growth engine you know, for the world, I think Europe will also slow. And that's certainly going to have impact um, on the euro dollar. The last theme I'm going to touch on is Brexit. Yes, it's still ongoing. It just seems like it never ends. You might recall what happened June 23rd, 2016, when that vote was shocking that they decided to uh, vote to leave the EU and the commensurate <laughs> fall in, in global markets that, that took place. Well, right now what's happening is next week um, in the middle of January, uh, the UK Parliament's going to vote on Theresa May's uh, negotiated exit package with the EU. Now, they put that vote off in December. It was supposed to take place then. And when they put it off, it did disrupt markets. So right now they're going to vote in about a week's time on it. It doesn't look like it's going to be successful. We're not really sure honestly what is going to happen. March 29th is a deadline um, that the UK is supposed to leave the EU. Now, if they don't get a deal or negotiate a deal or vote on a negotiated deal, there could be a no deal exit. While that's not the base case, it's just a huge risk. Right now, it's a little bit looking like that exit from the EU might be pushed back further. And that's a little bit exciting because if it's pushed back further, maybe it'll happen, I don't know, perhaps in May or it'll be more of an issue when we have that conference. Uh, Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, in the latest uh, financial stability report, which was put out late November 2018, warned of a no-deal Brexit exit <laughs> scenario. And, and it's, it's shocking. It's horrible. You can read it. Uh, Sterling goes below parity. 
Uh, so, you know, there's quite a lot of risk and sterling will continue to trade idiosyncratically until we get some clarity on what exactly is happening. Now I want to take a look uh, at some of the charts very quickly. First, we're going to look at a chart of Aussie dollar against dollar renminbi. So dollar renminbi, dollar China is this orange line and it's on the left axis and this axis is inverted. So high to low, seven is at the bottom, 6.3 at the top. As the orange line moves lower, renminbi is weakening against the US dollar. China's getting weaker. And you can see here, it just pulls Aussie lower with it. It's really tough for Aussie to go higher when renminbi is weakening. Here we see the flash crash of early January and renminbi is now strengthening a bit and Aussie uh, is strengthening a bit with it. I just wanna draw your attention here to the level seven on uh, dollar renminbi, that's a big level. That's a level uh, a lot of analysts are watching. They're calling watching seven. <laughs> that's what they're referring to. If that support goes, you can see Aussie much lower with it. So let's now just take a look at an Australian dollar chart by itself and we'll take a look at some specific levels. Here's Aussie dollar alone. This is a one year chart. And once again, I'm just highlighting the flash crash that was that vacuum kind of in liquidity between trading sessions when some currencies really fell hard. So traded down to 67.41 was that low. So that's certainly a level we're watching for target. And let's take this back further. Let's go back to all the way back to 2008. So you see here back at 2008, the low is 60 cents right here, 60 cents. And so that's really ultimately where I think Aussie can trade down to if China continues to slow down. And also if the U.S. economy happens to be in a late cycle, perhaps the Fed will tighten putting it into a late cycle and high beta currencies don't do well late in U.S. economic cycles. So just keep that in mind as well. Here's a chart of euro dollar. I made that white horizontal line. That's a key resistance level. That's actually around um, 116. 40, and then you can see down here, 112, the figure is support. Here again is a chart of Euro dollar. This is a five-year chart of Euro dollar. Let's just take a look at where Euro dollar can go. Uh, 110, the figure is certainly a psychological level for Euro. So if it breaks that support, we could see it much lower. We see this low here on January the 3rd, 2017, of 103.41. So that's really where we're looking for euro to go. You know, you all may also want to look at buying some euro puts that would cover out to say six months past all the event risk um, through May. Note that they're getting a, a bit expensive here. Here's a chart of sterling. You know, what can I say? It's trading about this new range is around like 128.50, 125 the figure. We've tested the downside on that flash crash day. It got to 124.41. Just taking a look at the five year chart. Here is the referendum vote that that night when the result came out and it's plummeted, plummeted again uh, that later that fall in October. You can see uh, October 16, 2016, the low is 118.41. So we're really looking uh, for some downside on sterling. If we don't get any positive news that they have a deal um, to exit the European Union. Thanks for joining me on this short video, looking at some of the market themes. I hope to see you in May and trade well, traders.